since knowing you, I've only seen your hair short. Maybe, I don't know. My right. Nice, definitely, but, yeah. definitely. All right, all right. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Love Bay Afro Beat Music Talk Radio. This is Sean Williams, a.k.a. The President, and I am the host of the Safe Room Podcast, a safe space for entrepreneurs and business owners here in Toronto to share their personal and professional stories. I feel like I need to give a quick update before we get to our guests, so just bear with me. So if you haven't paid attention to us here on Love Bay Radio, the last couple of weeks have been pre-recorded videos, and there's been a reason for that. So these recordings again i've done them months before and i wanted to give them the proper spotlight now when i joined love bay radio back at the end of february again i had those videos recorded and i told myself i don't want to just air them on spotify youtube i wanted to really bring it to a larger audience so over the next couple of weeks because we are wrapping up when it comes to all the pre-recorded videos we are going through an alternate schedule so this is the first case of it tonight. So let me now get into our guest. I apologize for the, the little disclaimer, but I feel like I had to let it be known. But now let's get into the 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 guests, the, the maid of honor here today on the podcast. She is a multi-business owner and a mompreneur, mother of two. Round of applause already for that. We love to see it. Operating in business for five years and has operated in a variety of fields, including travel and tourism social media management, and pet services. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I see you, Ellie. All right. She centers her work as a social media manager plus content creator on empowering women through management, strategy, business tips, and insights into their social media and marketing plans. Mm -hmm. She also goes by the business babe. I love the name right there. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Safe Room Podcast, we have Ellie Abraham. Hey, Ellie, how are you doing? I am doing so good. Sean, see my smile. It's big and bright. <laughs> Happy to be here. Happy to be with you and just um, grateful for this opportunity. Yes, I'm so grateful that, you know, you're here. You're, you're technically going to be here twice this week and next week. So it's a little two for one. So yeah. um, <laughs> like I mentioned, um, for anyone who's tuning in right now, we've actually had a interview with Ellie before and that will be airing next week. But I decided, you know what, I don't want to just like air the video. I want to also bring her here on Love Bay Radio Live. So, you know, we're going to get into like a little preview, do a little catch up session on everything. The questions are completely just vibes. It's going to be all vibes in this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> but um, I kind of want to do something that we already did, Ellie. And mm -hmm. it's a mainstay and it's the hot seat. So, um, the, I, listen, I know the first time you killed it. You did a fantastic job, right? So everything is pretty much the same except for one question, okay? So we just want to give a little, again, reminder for everyone just who you are. So, um, yeah, you, you ready? Let's get into it. We can get into oh, it. Yes. All right, we can get into it. Okay, okay. So first question, outside the work that you do, and you do a lot of work, which is yeah. incredible, Tell us something about yourself in one sentence. Something about myself in one sentence. We did this the last time and I was still stuck up on it. And today it's the same thing. But something I would say, I have a really big heart. I have I a lot of love to give. Yeah, I have a really big heart and a lot of love to give. Um, and I'm thankful that like, Oh, you said in one sentence, but yeah. So, no, I'm listen, if, if you want to go into the, the details, go into the details. This is your time. Don't worry. <laughs> what I was going to say is that um, I'm really thankful that I bet it on myself and I have been pushing, um, putting aside the fact that I'm, I get super shy sometimes. Sean, you know this, like we had a conversation before. I, I can tend to downplay or like seem you know, like, I don't want to be in the spotlight. But I realized that I need to be in the spotlight because of all this love I have and the impact that I want to make. So um, I'm very happy that I'm here. And I'm able to do that through all of my businesses, technically. Absolutely. And I feel like it's a common thing too. you have lots of people who just are afraid to kind of show their best traits or like their most you know astounding accomplishments and again like i'm the same case for a long time i used to tell myself you know what 
I don't really want to speak on like, oh, I, I do this. This is my podcast. Or like, I've been yeah. able to work with so much people. It's just like, I don't need to like throw that out. But sometimes it's good to kind of throw it out for yourself because it gives you that positive feeling to know that, you know, I'm doing something right. And you have like a supporters as well that will show that same type of love and energy towards the work that you do. So, I mean, I, I completely understand. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Sean, you, go ahead. You were saying, but I was just going to say like when, once you start putting yourself out there, you really see that you're inspiring a lot of people. Right. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So, um, this is where the second question kind of changes. So I will give people a little sneak peek in the recorded video that we did. I did ask her, what is one piece of advice you could share to a younger version of yourself? Right. So mm -hmm. I'm going to switch it up a bit now. Now, what piece, what is one piece of advice that you would share with your children, with your kids? One piece of advice that I would share with my kids is make sure you have sense. And if no one under, if no one, if you did not understand that in my Guyanese accent, <laughs> I was saying in proper English, make sure that you have wisdom and knowledge. Um, as like street sense, common sense, make sure you're actively learning to just, you have to up your brain. Uh, that's, that's all. <laughs> make those, those neuros like fire. Um, the life that we're we're out here in, especially these times that we're in, it requires you to have more than good looks. <laughs> so you need to have your head on and, you know, take care of yourself overall, health, physical, everything. That's what I would tell them. That's my advice to them. I, I love that. I think that's so important, especially how we're growing up in a society where it's just like, there's so many things happening, whether it's the people we interact with or just the things that we see outside of our homes our you know our comfort spaces and everything like that it's important to accumulate such knowledge and wisdom when it comes yeah. to certain situations you know whether it's you going out to work just understanding like okay how am i getting there and how i'm coming back or even if you're yeah. just going to meet with people if you're just even in your house and you're just dealing with people online virtually obviously you have people working remotely so it's like how do you interact how do you pick up knowledge and information that's going to be beneficial for you but also, you know, sharing that information back to someone else who probably needs it. Yeah, that was a really great question, Sean. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that might have been a better question than the first one. So um, I have to take notes for next time. So. <laughs> I love that question, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and may I ask, um, how old are your children? Because I know, I know you have two lovely children. So Yeah. So the eldest is six and then the youngest is three. Okay, that's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And, and go ahead. I, yeah, yeah. And you said that, and and they're homeschool. If I, I believe. Yes, I yes. do homeschool them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean that that's also another daunting task. So, like again, a mompreneur and you're homeschooling. Okay, I see you, Ellie. I see. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have the patience for it. That's all I'm gonna say. You have to have the patience for it. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it also kind of. Like the wisdoms you're sharing with your your children is something that I feel like you kept for yourself as well. Like, you know, I got to make sure that I'm staying wise and, you know, I'm setting a good example. And I you already are setting a perfect example. Oh, for that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The pressure for that is very real sometimes. Um, I think sometimes because of them, I can be I'm already hard on myself. But I think because of them and just as you said with the example, sometimes I tend to like be more hard. And like, you, you can't, you can't fail. This is not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So the third question I have here, an interesting fact that you rarely share. Now, I know what was the fact you said before. So I want you to say something different. I don't want you to copy now. I want you to say completely. No, different. no, don't worry, Sean. I am ready <laughs> for you this time. I'm still a little bit. If you can see my face in this lighting, I'm still turning red from being on this hot seat. <laughs> But um, I'm ready. So one thing, an uh, interesting thing, right? You said an interesting In thing. Fact, yeah. I can read novels really fast. Like I can finish. Uh, let me see. What is the thickest, the thickest book that you can think about? To Kill a Mockingbird. Just the, I don't. I'm sorry. It's like high school trauma. I, 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 the minute you said, I'm like, yeah, To Kill a how many, Mockingbird. How many pages was that? I can't I even remember. But I'm like, like, I don't know. 
Yeah, but like I can. Okay, so like um, I'm not sure, but people, what is this thing called? Um, the Hunger Games. Oh, okay. I read, yeah. I, let's just. I know people say that was a horrible book. Okay, the writing was whatever. But for reference here, I read so fast that I read that out like the whole series in a week. I feel that's okay. Again, maybe maybe I'm not the best person to answer this, but I feel like that's doable. It 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 could be, but I mean, mind you, like I still can do it right now with everything that I have like have going on. No, that's impressive. I think, yeah, I think the interesting thing is like when I when I binge, I binge hard on things. That let let's let's yeah. So so bringing it back to that, it's like when I binge, I binge hard. <laughs> I go hard. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. So it's, it's, not, it's not just books, right? It's like TV shows, anything like that. Yes. But TV shows may take longer. Like, for example, I don't know if you um, watch the show 100. You know what? I need to tap into that show. I've heard a lot of good things about that. It is, it is so good. It is so good, Sean. You need to watch that series. Um, 100, I probably finished that in three months. Wow. And it's, a, it's a long series. And it's not like I'm, I'm not doing stuff. Right, I do do stuff, but it's just somehow I find the time, and that's why I would say if anybody says they don't have time to do certain things, you have time for what you want to do. So. Mm, I like no, I like that, and I, that is so important because I think for you again, talking about everything you do again, you are a social media manager, content creator, mompreneur, and yet yeah. here you are able to like do all these like leisure activities, whether it's like reading, yeah. watching a series again. It's not the matter like I don't have time. It's just like, you know, you got to figure out how to, you know, establish time management. I think that's so important to anyone there. Like, you know, you allow yourself. OK, I'm going to do the work, but I also want time to just, you know, relax, have some self-care. Like even for me, like I'll, I'll be completely honest. I'm a huge music guy. Yeah, I feel like this year I haven't had the chance to listen to that much music, but also in a way it's not kind of affecting me to like, oh, like. I need to stop everything I'm doing and just like work, work, work. But it's like when yeah. I work, it's like I do what I need to do. And then when I get the chance to listen to some new music or just my playlist and everything like that, I feel like relaxed. I feel like, oh, I'm not pressuring myself to like listen to the new albums that I've dropped for the end of the week. It's like before I would like panic, like, no, I need to I need to get on. It. I need to do this. It's like, no, it's like I'm very Wait. chill and relaxed because I'm in a I'm in a good state yeah yeah we have to we have you have to give me some music suggestions maybe i'll give you some because i'm big on music too honestly like i'm working on something for the podcast or it's probably like a a music playlist for the week oh. or like or like the month so keep, keep an eye on that keep an eye on that okay i love that i love me a good playlist honestly i'll, I'll admit like i'm gonna have to get some recommendations from my sister if you listen <laughs> she's like the afro queen like she knows her afro music so i mean yeah. i'm that's a liquid we have to liquid her afterwards. Looking okay. forward to that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, the final question for this hot seat segment: What mm -hmm. is your personal safe room? So, what is a safe space that is could be physical, could be mental, that allows you to be your authentic self? Okay, you said I couldn't repeat it, but can I repeat this one? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, my bedroom. <laughs> Definitely my bedroom. Uh, I I read in there. I sleep in there. Um, sometimes I, a lot of times I do my work in my room. Uh, besides going out, because I think when when you are a online business owner, or even when you're just a business owner and you can work from anywhere, having the ability to go to cafes or hotels, you know, wherever you want to work, that's usually the going thing. But on the days where I don't want to see people. <laughs> <laughs> I do um, a lot of stuff inside of my bedroom. So that would be my personal safe, safe room. Yeah. Two things I want to say. First things first, you mentioned online business owners. I did see your reel today, how like it was kind of like a, like a meme of saying like, oh, if you're an online business worker, if you work at uh, online, like you're not a real business owner, Absolutely. like obviously like that got my blood boiling. Cause I'm like, okay. All right. Well, well, I, I I ain't got nothing to say on that. That's a whole different topic. But the second thing I do want to say is that, yeah, I feel like when you are an online business owner, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of like where you can work. It could be, you know, at a cafe or at a library or maybe you're somewhere else. Like so, I know sometimes when I was still in university, I would legit like 
be at like classes or like in a separate room on campus yeah. just doing other stuff if I needed to. But now I'm comfortable just kind of working at home. Like I literally work the same thing in my bedroom. Like I work yeah. in my bedroom. I do all the things I need to do. And like, I'm fine. I mean, sure. I can tell myself, like, let me go down to like Starbucks and then go or myself like a macchiato or whatever the case might be. I don't know my coffees, guys. So don't come after me. But I can yeah. do that. But it's like, no, nah, like I'm, I'm in the comfort of my home. I feel safe. This is my safe space, my safe room. So I completely echo your sentiment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not all the time you want to go see people and you want to like, I feel like it's an energy thing, too, especially if you go to Starbucks and you have to dial down into your work. There's a lot of like buzz. Right. So. Yeah, that's so true. And plus, like, you never know what you're going to run into when you're just out in the public. You just never know. Exactly. I'd rather be inside where like, listen, if I need to grab a snack, I ain't got to pay like 20 bucks to do so. I can just go down to my fridge. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, or Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <There's> that. <laughs> that too. OK, OK. Um, That was your second round of the hot seat i think you might be the first person to have like two rounds of the hot seat i told you before you love putting me here i think it's because of the reaction at this point <laughs> I, I, no no listen again there's gonna be someone in the next couple of weeks that's gonna get their second hot seat so don't worry they're gonna Yay. join the club <laughs> they're gonna join the club um but yeah um so for everyone listening again you're turning into the safe room podcast on love bay radio and this is Ellie, again, social media cre content creator, manager, whatever you want to put, uh, the business babe. I, I again, I really like that that nickname, it. the <laughs> business babe. I yeah. love that. Um, for everyone tuning in, again, we do have a interview with Ellie next week that will be airing. So for this conversation, we're basically giving you guys a sneak peek, but also kind of catching up on everything how Ellie's been doing. Um, like I said, you've been working super hard behind the scenes, just, you know, being consistent as always. And I kind of want to get into like, you know, what people can expect for next week in terms of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was going back and editing this episode that we did. And there was a lot of things that I was like, oh, wow, this like this is very interesting. And the first thing I want to talk about was the little activity session that we had for that episode and it was the social media checklist now, i remember at the time being you were in the process of releasing this you know instagram business guide social media guide and now that it's out i want to kind of ask you just like what are your thoughts on it do you feel like a lot of people are like gravitating to you know this product or i guess what is the sense of accomplishment you feel for releasing this guy do you feel like you know it's something that really helped you advance your skills to the next level? Like, what, what would you say is your takeaways from it? All right, Sean, we got to tie up the hair for this one. So. <laughs> it's uh, getting serious. Yeah, it's getting serious in here. It's getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so for the business, the business uh, guide that I released on Instagram, I would say that the sense of accomplishment I got from it was knowing to myself that I had all of this knowledge that would be able to help new business owners on Instagram because it's tailored more towards new business owners on Instagram who's using Instagram for their business and intermediate, right? So I felt like I needed to create this because I had all of this knowledge and I knew it would help them. And so when I released it, like, um, I'm going to be very transparent. I I did all of the work, but I had a copywriter review it and make sure that, you know, it was okay, everything sentence wise. Um, if you're in, if you, if you know about copy in your website, you would know that like, there's a, there's specific ways that you have to talk, right. Mm -hmm. To get your, your target audience and um, connect with them. Right. So when she was going over everything, she's just like, wow, Ellie, I can't believe this is free. <laughs> Like, and there were certain things she was like, listen, I would pay, I would happily pay for you to like do a, a teaching on certain aspects of the guide. And that's where I was just like, yes, this is what I want people to, to see, right? I want people to get the value from it and understand that I poured all of my sets <laughs> into this for you to be able to use it and implement it right away it's not one of those things where you have to take a whole um 
I would say like three months, you know, to work through and implement. I provide you with everything you need to know, all of the important things when it comes to using Instagram for your business. Uh, and then I give you the actionable steps to implement it within a couple of hours. <laughs> mm. I would say uh, a week max, but also you can go back to it and check through to see, hey, every now and then, is this, you know, am I following the guideline? Is this where I'm at? Do I need to update anything? So that was my sense of accomplishment, knowing that I'm able to give womenpreneurs or men, you know, that knowledge to level up their Instagram and use it to their, I'm looking for a word, but I'm blanking out here, Sean. But <laughs> No, listen, you, you, you said everything, so you're all good. Um, but no, I, I think it's it's really great that, you know, you were able to, again, feel some sense of accomplishment knowing that you were creating something that was going to benefit a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having someone like a copywriter to look over your, you know, your guide, I think it's so crucial, too, because I feel like a lot of times we tell ourselves, like, we can do everything, not just like put the content on there, but also like, you know, revise it, just do like a like a quick audit in a way and kind of review it. But sometimes you might need like that extra set of eyeballs to kind of see through and just understand like, oh, you need to fix this and you need to kind of tweak this but everything seems good I, I i'm doing the same thing right now behind the scenes like i'm working yeah. on little things and i'm reaching out to people saying like hey like i want to get your feedback on this before i push it out because i mean you want to give the best product as possible you don't want it to be where you push something out and then oh no there's like i'm missing a, a very major detail or like there's a grammatical error or something like that you don't want that like it just doesn't feel right on you but yeah. the one thing i wanted to add on and i just want to get your your response on this is that i really love the fact how this person told you at the time being like you're doing this for free like are you are you crazy and it's just like i feel like we are living in an era where like people are not afraid to say like yo the stuff that you're doing put a price on it like th this yeah. is value and there's no reason why you should be like doing this for free and trust me i've had that conversation with multiple people they said like oh see you want to like talk to people you want to like do workshops and stuff like that like you're going to do this for free. I'm like, well, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, no, that's a, it's a rhetorical question. Don't do it for free. You need, you need to put a price on it because like people would yeah. pay to get your expertise, you know, just the knowledge that you share. And I think it's so important because it also brings validation to work we're doing. If people would say that they would pay for this, that knows like, yo, that means I'm actually doing something proper. I'm actually bringing significant change to my audience and to my community. So, I mean, I just mm -hmm. want to get your thoughts in terms of just, again how your reaction was and just even now that you've got this sense of like you know confidence to say like yeah you know what maybe i want to create even more products you mentioned instagram maybe there's something coming for a tiktok is there something coming for a youtube perhaps mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. so before we get into that sean i just want to shout out alea who's my copywriter um you can find her on willow tree copy if you are looking for a copywriter she's amazing at what she does thank you alea uh, but in to that what you were saying your question was how do i feel about putting out these things for free right um i feel great <laughs> i know people are gonna say that you need to put a price on certain things but i think there's levels to it i honestly believe that there's levels to it uh so i don't mind giving out certain things for free uh especially i think especially to new business owners and stuff like that you know like if, if there's something that you wish you knew and you know to yourself that you were looking for this stuff and you maybe you didn't necessarily have the, the funds to pay for it like that when you're starting off, right? Because everybody's selling something. And some of these things that people are selling, you can literally Google it, but they're calling like $97 for it. No shade, but like... <laughs> I have invested in certain things. And after going through it, I was like, well, shucks, I, I knew this. <laughs> so I think that there's certain things that you can give out for free. Um, but then if someone more so wants to work more closely with you or they really want in-depth, detailed knowledge that you know to yourself you've spent thousands of dollars you know, to learn, I think that's where you can be like, okay, all right, I gave you this, but we can't give you every single thing for free, right? So that's where I think the price comes. Um, and yes, I am working on something in the upcoming months, because I am running a business. So when you're in business, you have to scale, 
Uh, so there's that. The thing that is coming is I am working. Hold on. Am I saying too much? Let me know. Let me <laughs> I mean, know. like, this is completely separate from what's going to be aired next week. So if you want to share it, then please share it. Because it, right, be, no, it won't be I'm said a, next week. I'm going to retract. I'm going to retract. And we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> 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 okay no problem no problem at all and you know what just to even piggyback what you said um yeah I, I feel like there's definitely like a middle spectrum when it comes to it there's certain things that you may share with your clients or with your audience that can be free and i think even with that there's different you know substitutions where like you know what if it's not money then maybe it's like a testimonial so it's like okay if i can't get or if I'm not going to charge this as like a service or something for a high price, then maybe it's like getting a testimonial because those add up. And honestly, don't underestimate the power of a testimonial. It may not be like a dollar sign, but that's something that can lead you towards, you know, making that profit. Because then if you want to do something even bigger and now you have a portfolio or now you have a list of testimonials that have the responses from your clients saying like, oh, wow, like Ellie was so amazing when she helped me, you know, with my social media accounts or like, She's a great communicator. She understands just my problems, my needs, and my wants. Those go a long way where people start to recognize your worth and your credibility. And I think that's as equally important to, you know, make a profit. Obviously, if you're a business, you want to make money. That's the whole mm -hmm. bottom line. But I feel like, and this might be my unpopular opinion. I'm not trying to be like a multimillionaire. Like, that's not my thing. I just want to be able to make money. So I'm doing the work that I'm doing and mm -hmm. I'm supporting people. And I'm supporting myself, supporting my family. And like, I'm living a good life. I see people nowadays, it's like, they're making millions of dollars. And like, I don't know why. It's just like, they decide to spend it on the most craziest things. Like even athletes, you see athletes making like 50 million a year. And it's just like, they're doing the craziest shenanigans. It's just, I don't know where their financial mindset goes towards like, oh, I'm gonna spend it on this bust down chain or spend it on like 20,000 cards. It's like, what, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why don't we just want to live life? <laughs> Sean's like, I want to be financially stable. That's that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it is. And I get that. Uh, and, and now I'm piggybacking off of you, right? Where you talked about, you don't know how far that testimonial will go. In the guide, I talk about that genuine connection building, right? For me, I'm all about the connection and building that relationship with people. Um, and sometimes you might do something for free and give something out for free, Sean, you know, there are certain interviews that, you know, might be for free. You do with people, you let people interview you for free instead of having to pay you. But that relationship that you guys have, it could go years. Today, tomorrow, that person is referencing back a multimillionaire and they remember Sean gave them this opportunity and you call them for something and it's like, yo, like Sean gave me this opportunity or, you know, me and Sean were like this it wasn't a you have to pay type of thing. All right, we're good. We're set. Right. So like, I think, yeah, definitely people need to um, sometimes know where you're at and what you can call your prices for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I appreciate the the nice sentiment in terms of like, just what I'm trying to do, you know, I'm really trying to create a space where the conversation I have with different individuals like yourself, it doesn't go unwarranted. I don't want it to be where it's you know, we had the conversation and once it's done, then get out of my face. I don't want to see you for the rest of my life. No, I want to keep building. I want to find ways where we can keep connecting, you know, just finding ways. Again, that's why, you know, you're here and that's why you're going to be on back to back weeks. Because I felt like, you know, yes, we had a fantastic conversation. But again, the back of my mind said, no, I mean, obviously the Love Bay Radio was like it was amazing. But it's like I want people to also hear Ellie, too. I don't want to just be from a pre-recorded video. I want people to actually feel like the energy from the conversations that's why i invited you back on i'm like yeah we have to get her on the radio actually like physically in form <laughs> in form i love that thank you so much sean <laughs> of course of course of course um another thing i actually want to talk about from what's going to be aired next week is mm -hmm. i asked you a question about the myths when it comes to branding and content strategy and i remember one of the responses that you gave was that for people who are probably starting off or even, you know, well deep into social media that you don't need to post all the time. And I know for me, like I've completely slowed down on my posting. I've only post like, I think once a week now, which is like, mm -hmm. it's good for me. I feel happy. I don't feel like I need to rush out anything, which is great. But I want to ask you, um, is there any other 
myths that you might want to speak on to? Or maybe do you feel like at some point, I guess piggybacking from what you said, how, you know, people should not be posting that often. Do you feel at some points that you kind of break that rule or like maybe it's a period and it could be unintentional where it's like, mm-hmm. you know what, man, I realized these last two weeks I've been posting like a, like a crazy person. And it's like, wow, I actually said one time, like, Oh, don't post a lot. Don't post a lot. And then it's like, look at me now. I sound like a, a walking con- contradiction. So <laughs> <All right. laughs> you, you've got me here. You've got me entangled. Um, <laughs> stop watching me so closely. <laughs> Um, so I do say don't post as often, but it's don't post as often if, if you can't keep it right. So for me, you, you said it cause you're, you're watching me. There's the statement Jim Rose said, watch me, but don't watch me too closely. You watch me too closely, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> cause yes, sometimes during, you know, different stages like I will post my go-to posting is three times a week so I will post Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays occasionally I will post like this is actual feed post that's how I I will post Um, and then there's sometimes where I will post on the weekend that's more personal but I am I show up seven days a week um love days 24 7 I probably show up 24 7 in my story (laughs) I'm like Hey, what's going on? It's like too much Ellie, man. Too much yes. Ellie. <laughs> but those are my people. You guys are my people and my stories, right? Um, so I do I do have times where like I will post five days a week. And that's just because sometimes that's how I plan it out, right? I will batch all of my content and then it depends on the goal and what I have in my head, what's going on. And it's like, all right, we'll we'll do this and we'll build that strength of like pushing out the content. Um, And if I'm launching something, let's say I'm I'm launching to open up for social media management clients, right, then I'm going to need to push. So it's it's all about for me, um, and advice to anyone, you know, it's all about what you're comfortable with what you can do. But if you can't do it, don't do it. (laughs) Don't don't force it. I I'm very like seasoned now and I, I love to post. That's that's one of the other things. Um, so I show up. I show up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's like what you mentioned. Uh, it's kind of a sense of balance. It's like yeah. there are people who can post like at a very high, like frequent level, but yeah. they understand their capacity and they understand that, OK, I can actually manage this is something I can actually, you know, work with. But mm-hmm. to those who are questioning if they can do something like that. I think that's what you're trying to get across. It's like, don't post if you need to, but like, don't be pressure if you know that that's not within your, your scheduling. And I know for me, like, that was the case. I know at one point I was just trying to like post everything, but now it's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take it easy. And even now I'm thinking about, you know, I want to create like a separate IG page and kind of separate myself and the podcast in a way. Cause I do want to, be a little bit more personal and I've kind of come to the decision like I kind of want to do more of my like goofy stuff but I feel like I don't want to do it on the podcast uh, like on terms of IG I want it to be like more like okay what you're getting on IG yeah. for the safe yeah. room official is stuff from the safe room podcast if you want to mm-hmm. see me a little bit more in an action just show my personalities then yeah because one thing like even I mentioned music I've been wanting to do like more like music takes like you know on my stories and get real detailed into that but i tell myself like wait you were like wait but you got the safe room podcast like he's he's talking about music 24 7 like wait, what, what's going on is it business is it entrepreneurship is it music like there's there's too much like you need to slow down so like i understand it's just you know okay i'll just separate it but even again from what you're saying again it's important to have that balance to have that just patience and not trying to force everything out Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it depends because I, a lot of people, a lot of business owners, that's something that they have, just as you said, you said that, you know, you don't know, should I post business? Should I post Sean, right? Creating a separate page is great. But if you can, if you can incorporate everything together, it's just about where you're going to show up and where you're going to showcase, right? Because you can showcase lots of behind the scenes on your stories. And through that, it's building your community because people aren't going to just think, for instance, I'm now coming onto your page and I see that you do all of these interviews, right? But what would make me want to do an interview with you? I'd have to get to know you to some extent, 
right? So if I'm following you and I'm watching your stories and I see, hey, like Sean's into music. He has a whole playlist. He's actually this fun guy. He has the whole vibe. I'm going to consider doing an interview with him, right? So it's, it's all about that. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention quickly was a lot of the times, and I think I said this in the interview we have coming up, um, is the organization. These people who you see posting like three times a day, five times a day, it's because they already batch their content, it's organized, and they, they're just posting it. They have it scheduled. So if you do not have your stuff organized and scheduled out, like don't try to upkeep with this whole posting three to five times a day, you're going to run into burnout. Absolutely. Listen, for everyone listening, batch content is your best friend. It is mm -hmm. your best friend. Yeah. Yes. Make yeah. that your, your priority. Number one, numero uno. Okay. So no, I, I totally agree. I, I did love how you even mentioned how just having, if you want to have a personal page and just have your same page as well, having some connectivity. And that's something I want to do too. I don't want it to be like, I'm creating a separate page and it's nothing related to the same room. It's like, no, okay. Now I'm, I'm throwing people out of the loop. I want to be like, okay, you get to see like a little bit more, but then you may see like a behind the scenes of like, oh, this is how I set up my equipment, yeah. you know, or like, yeah. hey, here's a little um, special moment I had with a guest that, you know, you should definitely check out. And if you want to hear more, go check out our page or go listen to the episode on Spotify. Like, that's something I actually want to do a little bit more because I do feel like at one point, and again, it's not I don't appreciate what I have on the Safe Room Official on IG, but it's like, it's like it's the same. And I'm like, huh, I kind of just switch it up in a bit. Just kinda, yeah. Do something like spicy, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I totally get that. Well, you know, after this, behind we can go talk. <laughs> so we have to, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> link up for sure. Link up for sure. Okay. Um, again, for everyone tuning in, you're listening to Love Bay Radio. This is Sean Williams from the Safe Room Podcast. We're here with Ellie Abraham, social media manager and content creator. We've been having a really great conversation. And you get to hear the interview I did with Ellie next week. We're just having a little Again, open chat, open session here, kind of giving you a preview, a sneak peek on what to expect for next week. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I don't think I actually went into full detail on this. So this is actually like a new kind of like revelation. But um, I know from you, you have your IG lives and you bring on, you know, different women entrepreneurs or different guests to have these really great conversations, which I really enjoy. I, I remember... um just seeing you doing these and i thought like you know these are really great and like you bring in some like fantastic guests i know the other day you had shay you had um lauren so i mean like wow like she's bringing in people like i know too i'm like all right like that i love the vibe like, even the people i don't know it's like wow like this is absolutely amazing so i want to ask you like just where did that idea come from to start the ig lives so Behind the scenes conversation for everyone who's listening, uh, I did mention to Sean that I'm interested in, to do, in doing podcasts, right? Uh, Sean, I, I, I started YouTubing probably in 2015, right? And when I started doing my YouTube, I, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to interview people. I want to go out there. I want to ask questions. I want to talk. So it was something that was since way back when, but I didn't have the courage. <laughs> and after I decided to do, you know, um, social media management and really bring myself out in the front line and, and put myself out there in the spotlight, it was like, how can I help other entrepreneurs in a way where they're learning from others? right? And they're able to see people who have either been there, they've done that, and in different fields. How can I do this? So I was like, okay, you don't have a podcast. You're not doing your YouTube right now, but you do lives. <laughs> Before I used to do lives myself and with my friends, right? So the, the lives weren't new to me, but I had stopped during COVID. Uh, and then I was like, okay, we're going to bring this back. So who can we how can we, who and how can we do this? And that's where it just stemmed from. It's like the impact, I want people to learn from other people, not just me. And I want 
entrepreneurs to see like success comes in different ways and it can be in different fields. So that's how I started doing those lives. And it's been great so far. Thank God. <laughs> I have been very blessed to have uh, the people that say, you know, we're, we're down to do these interviews on. Um, you know, as you said the other day, I had Shay. We had a great conversation. I've never met Shay before in real life. And I went to Toronto, came and met Shay, <laughs> did that interview. Uh, I had one with Lauren. I had uh, uh, Gallus in Paris recently too. And then um, just to say like upcoming, I have Olivia and uh, that's like coming to the end of the month. So like, yeah, it's really just showcasing entrepreneurs you know, these are different fields and you can learn from these people too, not just me. Yeah, absolutely. And the conversations are really great. Um, I remember one time, I think I was listening to the one with Lauren. I was like literally in the middle of work, but I said, you know what, I'm just going to be on my laptop, do my thing, but also have my phone to the side, just listen to the IG live, just kind of take in just the conversation itself. And I think it's really great too, because, you know, I feel like having conversations like that are so important because for anyone who could be listening or tuning in, you know, they might just need to hear from like two different perspectives, just yeah. what people are sharing their own personal stories. And I feel like we are living in the age of emotional storytelling where people want to hear those like raw, authentic experiences. And that's definitely something that I try to create here on the podcast. I try to mimic, you know, just a very chill and relaxed conversation. I don't want it to be where just question, answer, question, answer. I mean, sure. Go listen to those podcasts who do that. I ain't throwing no shade on that either. I mean, go do that. But I feel like what makes it special here is that you're not getting that type of vibe. You're getting more of just like real, like authentic moments like this, like you and I having these yeah. conversations where we're not, it doesn't feel forced. It just feels like For we're sure. flowing seamlessly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like a conversation with your friend. Right. And, and then everyone else gets to be a part of it or listen in if you just want to listen. So I love that too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I try to create that environment where it's like, you don't even realize that we're going live or like you don't even realize that the camera's recording. It's just like, yeah. no, it's only when I say, OK, we're done. It's like, oh, wow, like I forgot we recorded. It, just, it felt so like <laughs> locked in that, you know, I didn't realize that's what I want to create. Yeah, yeah. And I hope I hope that even everyone that's listening, they they feel that, too. So, yeah, that's that's the vibe that's being made here. And even for my interview, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I just have one more question before I move on mm -hmm. to the next part. I want to say, so when it comes to the IG lives, when am I coming on? Wait, when's it my turn? That's what I want to know. Okay, you know what I've always loved about you? Uh, I'm going to say this from my heart and with my chest. It's your <laughs> boldness. It is your boldness. I love it about you. The, the way you just, you're very upfront. And if you see an opportunity, you're not an opportunist. But if you see the opportunity and the vibes are right, you're there. You're like, yes. <laughs> uh, so I have, it, the, the live interviews were very centered around women. But then I noticed that I wasn't doing justice for my male audience. So I started bringing in some males here and there. Not too much. So Sean, if you want to come on in July, there's an open spot for you. Okay. 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 And listen, I, I completely understand. I understand no, if it's on, like a woman audience. Oh, hold on. Let me take that back. Not in July, June. There we go. June. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Okay. So that, that's perfect. Perfect. When you're ready, I, I'm ready in June. All right. All right. And again, I understand if it's like, you know, the audience that you serve is for women entrepreneurs. Listen, yeah. there's a lot of women podcasters that I know. Again, I ain't going to throw no names out that I've supported. And I, I've been waiting. I understand that they have a women audience, but I'm like, listen, what I'm known for is like breaking streaks. So I'm like, listen, like let's let's oh, set it up. <laughs> let's yeah. Set it up. Oh no, you're you're here in June. Uh, when that's 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 all you, baby. When June comes, you're right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. 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 Um. Okay. So another part I actually want to talk about. I kind of want to dive a little bit outside of social media for a bit because mm -hmm. I know. When I said at the beginning that some of the work that you've done also is in travel and tourism, which I found very interesting. That was a new revelation for me. I was like, hold on a second. Wait a minute. So I want to know, like, where did that get started? Was this something from, like, work or maybe just a personal interest that like, led you into travel and tourism? Personal interest. Were you finished your question? Yeah, I was I was done. Don't worry. You did not cut me off. You're good. 
Okay, okay. So personal interest, I have been catching flights since I was one. Uh, and it only stopped during COVID. <laughs> so going back to Toronto just recently, like I went back to Toronto last week. Um, that was my first flight since COVID happened. Uh, and the travel and tourism, as I said, I've been traveling since then. And I just, I was interested. I love learning about different countries, traveling, going, experiencing cultures, their food, food. <laughs> So that's how that came. I went to school for it. I went to Centennial for travel and tourism. Uh, I worked as a travel agent for a little bit, about a, about a couple of months. And then I was a, what is this thing called again, Sean? Where a, a co-op, a co-op student. Oh, so a co-op placement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had co-op placement and then I was working as a travel and tour, uh, travel agent for a little bit, like a couple of months. Um, probably around six months and then I stopped uh, because it wasn't where I wanted to be. I don't like being, and it's so contradictory because I'm behind a desk and my phone all of the time, but you know what? I'm outside, I'm not stuck at home. <laughs> but that's what it was back then, way back then, it was like I was behind the desk, so I kind of got out from that, yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that's great to hear. I mean, seeing that again, you've been traveling for a long, long time now, I mean, it must it must be like a fantastic experience. Um, yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there like any place you've been to so far that has been your favorite? I'm going to be biased and I'm going to say Guyana because that's my home. OK, 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 right. OK, OK, OK. But if we're being if we're being for real, I am going to say a place that I have traveled and it is my favorite is New York really yeah yeah even though the people in new york or they are a lot of them are rude okay <laughs> they're, they're they're angry um i think it's those concrete buildings the vibe in new york is unmatched like if you if you were to you know exclude the caribbean vibe and stuff like that around on all of the caribbean new york has a certain vibe about it where it's it's lively you know how they say the big apple everything comes out at night it's not just nighttime it's lively it's it's beautiful in new york sean if you haven't if have you been there before oh multiple times i yes. I, I, I got family in new york so like i <laughs> can you relate or no yeah. you know what I understand where you're coming from. I, do, I understand, like, in the Big Apple, everything comes out at night. But even, like, in the daytime, it's just, it's so busy. It's, it's so hectic. But, again, I, it kind of gives off this type of, like, aura in a way where, yes. again, just, like, you have to be in that space where everything's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. So that, for me, would be it. Um, and I know you didn't ask, but second to that would be Barbados. It's beautiful there. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, is there like any particular trip where it did not go out the the way you planned? Yes, when I went to New York one time, that did not go as planned. <laughs> so um, we got we got New York. It's like yeah, that's a best favorite, but also at the same time, nah, things did yes. not go well. Yeah, things did not go well. I had to catch my ass back over to Toronto like next couple of days, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, definitely won't get into the details for that, but um, I, I find that interesting. Um, but that's that's good to hear. And I mean, like, again, for anyone who's probably listening, getting the chance to travel is always a great experience because again, you get to, you know, check out different people, their different cultures, just interact and just see how everything is. But even when you were saying that, Ellie, I felt like you know, it would have been really great if she was like doing vlogs and like capturing content for this. Like that would have been so good. That's how I started my YouTube channel, Sean. I okay. Was and I was going after getting sponsorship for hotels, but then I got shy and I was like, Because eh. <laughs> I feel like that's perfect. Because again, someone like yourself going to travel and everything like that, just being able to collect content and just like share these different perspectives are really great. And again, you mentioned food. So like, you know, going to like maybe like in Italy and then maybe a Japan the next time or like a Dubai or somewhere in Jamaica, like just the varieties are there yeah 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 for sure yes i mean i, I don't know maybe like in the, i kind of respark are, are you still doing stuff like this or like has it just kind of been like no i'm aiming i'm going towards it i'm going towards okay. it 
am. Yeah, the, um, the courage is here and I'm not dimming the light anymore. The light is shining. <laughs> Okay, I love that. I love that. I because I think that's something that you could definitely like benefit from for sure. Yeah, yeah. But one thing at a time. I have a couple of things I have to get in place, um, and then you know we'll we'll start branching out even more. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of which, and this just kind of popped in my head too. I remember from our interview at the end that we were both trying to figure out our TikTok situation. So I'll mm -hmm. give a little update on my end. Still nothing, but there's planning. There's planning. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm not doing anything. I am planning. I am being very, like, strategic, but also very loose. I don't want to be, like, so stern, but, like, I understand, like, okay, for TikTok, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be posting, like, like, clips, highlights from each episode. And, like, again, I want to get into video podcasts. So I'm doing a lot of deep insights into YouTube, and that's going to kind of be like the two channels that connect to very well, like YouTube and TikTok. So I've been doing all right. I wanted to ask you, because I know you said you're definitely want to do a little bit more on TikTok. Like, how's everything on that end? Lord, me and TikTok right now, my girls, I see. So I built a community with uh, when I so TikTok, I started using TikTok as a place to give young girls advice. And I built a community there. It's not a majorly crazy big community, but it's big enough. All right. And I see my girls checking in. They view my profile. They like even my old videos. And I'm here like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm over here on Instagram <laughs> doing everything, <laughs> trying to build my LinkedIn. So Sean, to your question, TikTok, I have been MIA. I've been hiding. <laughs> <laughs> and especially with the whole ban going on, it's just uh, re-strategizing because everybody is kind of like, well, what do we do now with TikTok? So uh, for me, when it comes to TikTok, my focus, I will study it a bit more and, and you know, thing. But right now, my focus is more so on Instagram, LinkedIn, and going towards YouTube. Yeah, definitely. I, I will say this without no filter. Never <laughs> was a TikTok person from day one. I, I was like the biggest like TikTok hater. I'm like, if you're on TikTok, I'm like, the conversation's over. We could be having a fantastic conversation. Mint, you mentioned, oh, I'm on so TikTok. Over there. I understand, but it was it, like, I don't know what it was. It was just like, you know, when there's just something about like a, a subject matter or a thing or whatever the case may be that no matter how much times like you hear other things like, oh, but it's good. It's just like, I understand. And I'm not even yeah. trying to say like, I hate, like hate the whole thing and what you're saying. It's just like, I can't get down with it. Like no matter what, like yeah. TikTok, the only time I'm on there is if I need a good laugh, but everything yeah. else, I'm like, if I see a bunch of nonsense, like anything that just turned me off in the wrong way, I'm like, nah. I'm a hop off. Like most of the times, like it's good. But you know what, Sean, that's great that you were able to do that because a lot of people just like business owners, especially, you know, they just jump onto different platforms because they hear it, that it's the new thing and then they can't upkeep it. Right. Uh, so once I would say again, like once you know what it is that you like and where you can show up, show up there, the rest of it, like it's okay. It's okay. You can get around to it. <laughs> yeah exactly and again i only go there for like fun purposes so sometimes my sister and i will be sending like tiktok clips so like we'll be getting a good chuckle a good laugh from there but in terms of everything else i feel like youtube is what i'm leaning towards too i feel like that is, especially for me being someone who's in long form content don't get me wrong i could do short form but that's where you have youtube shorts so it's like yeah. it's not like i'm completely leaving off of youtube i got youtube shorts so there's another leverage point so that, that that's just my thing tiktok again if you guys love tiktok cool that's your yeah. cup of tea swell i don't drink that tea that's not that's yeah. not, that's not me yeah 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 definitely it's more instant growth but long form content is is where it's at and i i have found even with my own instagram uh long form content is what my audience seems to to like more so i'm i'm gravitating more towards that and i should have known that before but hey it's all about experimenting right Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. I have one more question and I want to do like a, a final activity to wrap up this conversation. Um, yeah. So again, people are coming in late. To, you are listening to the safe room podcast on love Bay radio. We're here with Ellie Abraham, a social media manager and content creator. 
It's been a very fun conversation. You'll get to hear our full interview with myself and Ellie next week. So make sure to tune in to Love Bay Radio next week, Thursday at 8 p.m. for that. But the final question I have, Ellie, is what are your final takeaways, I guess, from this conversation? I know this one was like very, very open. It was like there was not that much structure, but I feel like and maybe I could probably speak on this. I feel like this was more fun than the episode that's going to come out next week. I'm not saying don't tune in the next week. It was a fantastic conversation. But I feel like for this one, it was a little bit different because I think like, again, we've had a couple of chats before and already doing one recording to now coming on here again. And I think just even having you, I think it's really special to me because it's like you're getting your flower. It's not that it's just a recorded video that people get to actually see and hear you get to feel just, you know, your personality and everything like that. So I guess yeah. like what, what are your takeaways from this conversation? My takeaways from this conversation is I need to book a, the, the confirmation with you for you. <laughs> so I'm serious sometimes. But yes. Okay, so that's that's one offhand. Uh the other thing is really continuously building genuine connections with people. Uh that is my biggest takeaway because Sean, just going back to the the vibe and everything that you are building here with Love Bay and the safe room um, is building those genuine connections and making sure that you maintain it. That's my whole, that's my whole takeaway from this. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Grateful to be here with you and doing this, this conversation. Yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And, you know, again, that's all I want to do. I really want to bring out these, genuine conversations i've been talking to people behind the scenes and i've been asking them like just you know from past interviews like what do you really appreciate and they say like the fact that you know you are trying to like you know bring positive connections you're not trying to just do this to see like hey like i got this person on the pod like listen if i could boast the the type of people i've got on this podcast i've got like legit like juno award winning artists i have talked to like higher top clear like client i could both but it's like it's not about that because like, yeah for me it's about how can we build a community with the safe room that allows us to you know support each other and you know reach to our goals see our full potential i mean that's what mm -hmm. i'm trying to do here mm -hmm. yeah and I, I think it's really it's great especially because like when i listen to your podcast i i can't say there's ever a episode where i haven't learned something mm, i so, appreciate that yeah yeah, I, gotta gotta <laughs> gotta get the sense. So yeah, because I I definitely want that to be as well. I want it to be that it's also something for people to you know get some valuable like insights. I mean, obviously it's open ended, and I want it to be like more like emotional. But I also hope people aren't just like leaving away like, oh man, like you didn't say nothing, bro. Like what's going on? It's like I'm glad to hear that. It's like no, I actually learned something from every episode. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it, it it's not even just education. Maybe you learn something about someone that you didn't know. Maybe you learn an experience that you can, you know, build off of and be like take away. So I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I want to get into our final activity for this mm -hmm. conversation. So I want to do a blind ranking. Now I've done this a couple of times on the podcast. I don't mm -hmm. think I've yet to had one person that has like successfully got this. So no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, and the blind ranking I want to do is I want you to rank these Caribbean countries from one to five in terms of like where you want to travel next. Right. Okay. But the whole point of it, again, it's blind ranking. So I'm going to list it and you, you're not going to know what comes next. So I'm not going to say all five at once. It's going to be I'm going to say one by one and you're going to have to place it from like one being the highest or like oh i want to go and travel now or like five like not really and then like you know one two three four five if that makes sense just go <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know we're, we're just gonna try it out you know i love that i love that energy all right um okay so the first country we have here mm -hmm. is jamaica so where are you ranking that in terms of like your interest to travel right now one two three four five now five <laughs> you're not a Jamaica. okay so jamaica just not on your priority at this point <laughs> wait no i said no <laughs> you said five so i'm like oh so you don't want to go <laughs> so, what? oh what okay 
Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> I mean, I mean, do you want to give a reason to why it's one? You know, give some rationale on it. I Jamaica has been on my list to go for years from since I was doing travel and tourism, and I I have not gone. I just no. So I I need to be there now. I need the sun. I need to go on one of those rafts. <laughs> mm, okay, I feel you. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. The next one I have here is Grenada. Uh, four. Okay. Sean, why are you like, I'm, okay. I, I, I'm a little hurt because I mean my background is Grenada, so I mean I was hoping that would be number one, but it's okay. <laughs> four. Okay. I passed through there before. You have. Yeah, I've passed through there before. The people are very nice, like yourself, you know. So I, I could get that. It's very, it's very welcoming. Um, but for because I've passed through there already. So okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Next one I have here is Trinidad and Tobago. Five. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Been to Trinidad too many times. It's Guyana's neighbor. Um, beautiful country, but yeah, five. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I I understand that. You know, when you've been to a place multiple times, it's just kind of like I don't want to be there again, but it's just like it's it's too much it's redundant to the point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh next one, and I just remember you have two and three open. I think you still have the two slot and three slot open. Okay. Next one is Bahamas. Uh Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Have you been there before? Or? Uh, no, I haven't been there before, but may, so that was one of the top destinations during travel and tourism. So I did a lot of itineraries for that. And it just didn't seem to interest me that much besides the resorts. Mm, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you have one more and it's the, the number two spots. Eh? So for number two, it's going to be Guyana. <laughs> yes. So, and it's so funny that that comes in the ranking because I would go to Jamaica right now instead of Guyana. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, like, oh, man, if I say Guyana last, are you going to be upset? Like, ah, oh, dang it. No, 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 no. It's, it's so funny that it came that way because it is actually the way that I would want it to be. Um, but, yeah. That was fun. Okay. I think, okay. All right. All right. So just to recap, so number one was Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Number two was Guyana. Number three was Bahamas. Number four, unfortunately, was Grenada. I wish that was number one personally. <laughs> but I listen, I ain't going to say much. And number five was Trinidad and Tobago. And to all the Caribbean countries or all the people listening, it's all love to all the countries. All right. There's no ranking. We all love all the Caribbean countries here. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I love all of them. It's just that some of them I've passed through, and yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, But yeah, that kind of wraps up everything. Ellie, thank you for coming on, and we'll, we'll see you back next week. But this, this is the first time you're coming on live, Dude. like actually in live, so. You are so welcome, Sean, and thank you so much for having me. This was fun. I enjoyed every bit of it. All right, perfect, perfect. Where can people find you on social media? I know you're going to say that next week, but I mean, just for future reference, I guess. Where can people find you? So you can find me at Socially Ellie on Instagram. Um, that is my main platform right now. So I'm going to leave it at that. LinkedIn is coming. If you look for Alicia but Abraham, you should find me there too. Uh, we can connect there. Either one is fine. But Socially Ellie, I'm more active. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Ellie, and thank you to everyone listening to the Safe Room Podcast here on Love Bay Radio. If you want to find us on Instagram, you can check us out at the Safe Room Official. I ain't going to say TikTok anymore because, I mean, I did say in the, in the recording, but I'm telling you right now, it won't be the case. I, I told you I've kind of given up on that, not to say that I threw in the towel, but we're, we're evolving. We're, we're pivoting. So stay tuned for youtube because that's something i actually want to get into so youtube stuff is definitely going to come out soon if mm -hmm. you want to check out our previous conversations we've had you can find us on spotify and apple podcast by typing in the safe room and yeah make sure you guys tune in next week thursday to your favorite podcast on love bay radio the safe room thank you again to everyone listening 
Thank you again to Ellie, and we'll see you guys next time. See you.